You already have the skills to be a hacker, and they're the most dangerous, most effective skills for an attack. I'm talking about social engineering. Instead of hacking computers and servers and networks, we're hacking this, the human OS, the human operating system, the brain. And in this video, I'm gonna show you three skills that literally anyone can use to hack you, your company, your friends, your family. It's scary. Skill number one, recon, short for reconnaissance. This is all about gathering information. For a hacker getting ready for an attack, this is the first thing they do. They try to find out as much information about their target, which might be you, might be your company, as they can to get ready and prep for later attacks. Now again, I said you already have the skill. Everyone has the skill. The skill of snooping on your ex-girlfriend on social media, wondering what she's up to. Or maybe you have a new coworker. What do you do? You get on Facebook, you get on LinkedIn, Twitter, and see what they're about. You snoop on them. That's hacking. <laughs> now I know it may not feel like it because you're not doing anything nefarious. You don't have bad motivations. Social media is the best place for a hacker to start hacking you or your company. And the craziest part about this is that it's not illegal. <laughs> They're just looking at information that's publicly available. In the hacking community, they call this OSINT or O-S-I-N-T, which stands for Open Source Intelligence. And it involves hackers trying to find out information about you or your company by just looking at things that are already public. Your Facebook profile, your Twitter profile, LinkedIn. Shoot, they just Google you and they can find out information about you. Now, if a hacker is targeting you or an individual, it could be as simple as just going to their public Facebook profile, like mine here, and learning things about them, like learning that, hey, this guy's a Christian. There's some of his friends. He liked a guy named Ravi Zacharias. Here are some family members, and now I'm realizing I should probably hide some of my stuff now. <laughs> Places I've been, Paris, Wahlburgers, Eugene. Okay, you're probably thinking, what can a hacker do with these just facts, just facts about me? or you? The answer is a lot. Maybe knowing that I like Paris, you can send me an email about Paris and get me to download something, but that download actually is a virus. Maybe you can impersonate my friends and try to talk to me as one of my friends, or maybe impersonate me and try to hack somebody else. The options are pretty endless, and we'll go into more detail on those types of attacks later on in this series. LinkedIn by itself is crazy for gathering information. Like if you wanted to target a company, just looking at my profile, in my past work experience, I mean, I list information about the company that is obviously advertising my skills and what I've worked with, but I'm also at the same time saying, hey, this company has this technology, a bunch of Cisco technology, Cisco ASAs, which is how they defend their network. A hacker can take that information and use that in attacks later on. It's kind of crazy, especially when we live in a world where we're told to market ourselves, and I'll tell you to do this all the time. It is important to, when you're trying to find the next job, to market yourself, tell people about who you are, tell people what you've done, but there's a flip side to it. That information can be used against you. So you gotta be careful. So honestly, you already possess the most powerful recon skills out there. Just being able to search Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, there's so much you can learn about people. Like I challenge you to look up stuff on yourself right now. See how much of your stuff is public. If I tried to hack you, what would I find? If you tried to hack you, uh, try that now, what would you find? Now recon can become more technical. And I wanna show you this because it's scary the tools that hackers can use to find out information about us. I mentioned this process of looking at publicly available information is called OSINT or open source information. And here we have a website dedicated to <laughs> giving you tools to do that, the OSINT framework. And they have this crazy graph over here where you can go, hey, if I wanna search usernames, um, here's all kinds of tools I can use to find usernames. Like this one here, I'm gonna check mine, network chuck, check. And instantly I know where Network Chuck is on all these social media platforms. Scary, right? And that was crazy easy. And of course, a ton of social media tools here from Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, LinkedIn, all kinds of stuff. We can use a tool called Twint, which is this crazy advanced Twitter search. You don't need an account. Check this out. I can get a list of all my tweets from my username or maybe just tweets I sent in the last week or maybe tweets that were near a city, which is even scarier. <laughs> like, check this out. <laughs> I found tweets that were near a city. You can search for that. Or I can find people I know. I can get a list of people I follow. Just like that. It's a little scary how powerful this is. How you can get so much information with one command. There's a website called hunter.io. All you gotta do is search a company. Like let's say Starbucks. And it will pull a list, a result, of legit email addresses that belong to real people and their phone numbers. Opening up just a crazy amount of attacks you could use. Now I'm not gonna show you this stuff right now. <laughs> They'll get mad at me. They've done it before. And then my favorite method to get information is Google. You can use a technique called Google hacking or Google dorking to find out all kinds of information that is public, but probably shouldn't be. I actually made a video about it here if you wanna check it out. So how do you protect yourself with this, with recon, with people finding out information about you? Well, just don't put information out there about yourself. Assume that whatever you put on the internet, even if you think it's private, 
Assume it's going to be seen. Assume that someone could find this information about you. I'm telling you, even if you set that sucker to private, even if you post and it's for friends only, man, don't, don't assume that people can't find that information. And if you're a company, man, tell your employees not to post things about your company online, on social media. Have policies, train your employees. Skill number two, you already have to start hacking right now. And it's a weird one. Dumpster diving. Digging in someone's trash, their bin, whatever you call it. It's a legit technique that hackers can use and it can be crazy effective. I think about this, when you get junk mail, maybe, hey, you've been pre-approved for this $5,000 credit line or whatever. What do you do with it? Do you just throw it away? If you do, well, then here's what can happen. On that mail, it has your name, it has your address. It's got information about you that hackers could use. And all someone has to do is dig through your trash and they can find this information. Now, for the most part, this isn't really illegal. In most parts of the United States, it's public domain. You can dig through someone's trash. Now, I'm not saying go dig through people's trash. Please don't do that. <laughs> At least consult a lawyer before you do it, if you really want to. But think about what you've thrown away and what that might tell people about you. Things you don't want people to know. And not just an individual, think about a company. A company throws away stuff all the time. Documents that really will have some crazy classified information that they hackers would love to get. They would love to see that stuff. Passwords, email lists, purchase orders, all kinds of stuff that might seem harmless to most people, but man, in the hands of a hacker, they can take that and use it for whatever they want. So dumpster diving, how do you protect yourself from your own trash? Well, don't throw away anything that you wouldn't want people to see. I mean, that banana peel, hackers are going to go, oh, banana peel. They like bananas. I've got them now. Like that's not going to hurt. I don't think it could, I guess. I don't know. But documents and things that have information about you, Man, shred that sucker. Get a shredder. Get it to those tiny pieces to where it's impossible for them to reclaim the information. Companies, man, just don't throw away your stuff and the regular trash. If you've got documents that you have to get rid of and dispose of, hire a third-party company. That's what most companies do, most enterprise companies. They'll hire a third-party company to come in, properly shred and dispose their, their documents and all their classified information. I mean, computers too. Computers, hard drives, network equipment, anything technical could have crazy amounts of classified information on it. Hire a recycling company to dispose of that for you. They'll wipe the hard drives. They'll do whatever they want with it, but they'll make sure it's safe. Don't just throw your computers in the trash. Skill number three that everyone has that you can use to start hacking someone right now. This one's pretty easy. Shoulder surfing. Shoulder surfing is just when anyone ah <laughs> looks over your shoulder and looks at what you're doing. Get out of here. <laughs> and this one might feel a bit obvious. I mean, right, you're, you're sitting there typing away at your computer. Someone's breathing over your neck <sighs> and looking at what you're doing. They could probably see what password you're putting in. They could see what document you're working on, get some information about you or your company. All you got to do is whack them and you're good, right? Well, it becomes more complex than that. Shoulder surfing isn't just someone over your shoulder at a computer. It could be, hey, I'm chilling out at Starbucks and I'm on my laptop and just sipping a latte. Bunch of people there. They can see you. I mean, come on, be honest. Haven't you been at Starbucks and kind of snuck a peek at someone's laptop? Because, I mean, you got nothing else to do. You're standing in line. Look at that. What are they doing? It's easy for you. It's pretty easy for a hacker, too. And don't just think about computers. I mean, your phone. Goodness gracious. If you're standing in line anywhere in a public situation and you're on your phone doing stuff, it's not hard for you to go, oh, what's that guy doing? You could be checking your email. You could be putting your passcode in. Again, something super simple that you're pretty good at already, right? And this kind of stuff's been happening for a long time. And think about ATM machines. You're at an ATM machine, put in your pen for your debit card. People kind of look over. Like, it happens. The solution to this is pretty simple, right? Just make sure that no one can see what you're doing except for you. You're at Starbucks. Make sure people don't have a direct line of sight to your laptop. Putting your passcode in, maybe don't use a passcode. Maybe use a biometric thumb reader. Face ID, of course, face ID is kind of complicated now with our masks. And I can't tell you how many times I've been like, okay, this is going to work now. No, it's not. Put my passcode in. And I, uh, gosh, someone saw my passcode maybe. I don't know. And if a hacker's really being nefarious and wanting to know about what you're doing, they could be somewhere like across the street and they got a telescope looking in on what you're doing. Maybe they have a, a camera with a telephoto lens. They're crazy. And by crazy, I mean they're really good at what they do. And also shoulder surfing can be as simple as eavesdropping. Listening in on what people are saying. I could be sitting in Starbucks. I'm the hacker. And I'm just, I got my headphones in. I'm typing away. I'm not playing anything. I've got no music. I've got no video playing. I'm listening for something around me. I want to eavesdrop on some conversations. Now, I'm guilty of this all the time. Do you ever, like, you're at a restaurant or in a public place and you hear someone say, like, um, oh, yeah, we installed the Cisco router here. Oh, yeah, I checked out my VMware thing. Like, I have all these buzzwords and I'm an, I'm an IT guy. I'm a geek. When I hear these buzzwords, perk, I'm like, what did you guys say? <laughs> I listen to every single word they say after that. 
Now, I'm not trying to hack them. I'm not trying to steal their information. I just wanted to go talk to them, find out what they're doing. It sounds interesting. But for a hacker, that's just gold. That's easy. So think about this. Let's say they want to hack Tesla. They'll locate Tesla headquarters, find the nearest coffee shop, maybe Starbucks, and then go hang out there. Why? Well, because maybe the employees, the engineers at Tesla will go there for their caffeine fix around the afternoon. And I'm sitting there plugging away, got my earbuds in, but I'm listening. I've got stuff recording. I'm just waiting. So when they're there and they have their badges on and they're about to get their coffee, they're talking about their their next meeting and what they're going to be doing today. I'm gathering all that information. I'm getting my attack, my hack ready. Now, again, the solution is simple. Just don't talk about work outside of work. But easier said than done, right? You can't help it sometimes. If you're out with your buddies and you just came out of a meeting, you're like, can you believe that guy? I can't believe he wanted to put a Cisco ASA in and we're not even patched right now. Like you could say anything and someone's listening. You don't know who's, who's going to be listening to you. You have no idea. So these three techniques, recon, dumpster diving, shoulder surfing, you can do all of these. Shoot, your grandma can do some of these. They're not hard, but they are some of the main skills that hackers use to get ready for an attack on you or your company. Now, again, these attacks are crazy dangerous for two reasons. One, Anybody can pretty much do any of these. It's not exactly a technical skill set. Now, it can be, but at the surface level, anyone can do it. And number two, these are the hardest attacks to protect yourself from. As a person, as an individual, as a company, it's hard because you're depending on people, on the human operating system. And let me tell you, the human OS, it's not running Windows 10. It's not Linux. It's not Mac OS. That's a flawed operating system that needs a ton of patches. It can be hacked. It has a ton of vulnerabilities. So what do we do? Well, we educate ourselves, learn about how attackers can learn about us and do our best to prevent that. If you're a company, man, train your employees, have the education in there. Say, hey, don't put out information. Don't throw away things that might have confidential information on them. Don't talk about company secrets while you're out and about. This is where hackers start to hack. If you can foil the hackers here, at these stages, you might end up winning the battle. But if you give them an open door at these stages, they can find out information about you. You might just open yourself up to further attacks. Now, social engineering attacks do not stop here. They do get really, really cool. But these are interesting because they set the stage, set the tone for whatever you're going to do next. And they're all psychological. They're all messing with people and skills that you probably already have or you just maybe learn really quickly, fine tune and start to attack people, which you should not do. But you got to get your mind inside the mind of a hacker to protect yourself and your company. Well, anyways, guys, that's about it. Let me know what you think of the video in the comments below. Let me know if you've been hacked. I would love to hear those stories. I'm sure other people would too. Let me know if your company's been hacked. Hearing these stories and sharing these stories does help people stay safe. And of course, if you like the video, hit that like button. It does help the YouTube algorithm. And if you like what I'm doing here, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, hang out. I post videos every single week, including videos in this CompTIA Security Plus series. As part of the free course I'm working on with David Bomble and Jeremy Chara, I'm posting a free video each week. Now, I know, watching one video a week may not cut it. You want more. And you know what? We're going to do that for you. We're posting once a week on YouTube, but we're putting videos as we make them, as we create them on thisisit.io. So check that out, link below. It's a great way to support our mission and what we're doing here on YouTube, and you get advanced access to all that we're doing. Yep, that's all I got. I'll catch you guys later. Thank you.